Did you know that now that California passed the fast food minimum wage law starting at the beginning of April, all fast food workers that are making $20 an hour are now among the highest paid individuals in the U.S. <laughs> I mean, this is just too funny, man. You can't help but laugh at that. Now I realize there's a lot of people that make more money than $20 an hour, but as far as like, you know, the average wage goes, especially starting wages for something like this, it's, it's the highest in the nation, guys. It's unbelievable. And this is such a hot topic, I'm just gonna keep poking at it. Literally overnight, over half a million people in California now make $20 an hour due to this new law. Here's the problem though. Their pay increase is not really gonna help them much when it comes to finding an affordable place to live, which is really the saddest part of this whole story because California is so extremely expensive that I can even agree that $20 an hour is not really enough money. You still need to pool money together with people and have roommates or live with family to be able to survive off of that unless you're living in a very dangerous part of town. Because even though they're making 20 bucks an hour, this still only works out to about a little over $41,000 a year for an annual salary. The problem is guys, like I've mentioned in past videos about this, that the statewide minimum wage in California is still $16 an hour, but now that fast food has thrown their hat in the table and they're being forced to pay 20 bucks an hour, this is gonna leave other employers no choice but to jump on the bandwagon because a lot of people are gonna be, you know, fleeing their jobs to go make $4 an hour more at a fast food restaurant. But to be able to buy a house in California, you need to make about $197,000 a year. So, you know, people working these jobs are still gonna have no shot at ever becoming a homeowner, that's for sure. And, you know, I realize that these are just stepping stone jobs. These are not supposed to be careers, but some people are not able to, you know, work a better job than that because they don't have the skills, you know? So they're gonna be kind of stuck renting forever and just in this loop you know that's what's going to happen to people like that unfortunately and there's no getting around it that's always been kind of like a part of our economy and our society that's always been the case it is interesting too when you kind of zoom out and say okay twenty dollars an hour is way too much to be paying people that work at fast food restaurants but when you see just how expensive it is to live there you know quickly your eyes are opened up and you realize like maybe we do need to pay people this much if not even more the problem is it's being forced it's putting people out of business guys that's the reality so you know the issue is that the government gets involved and you know causing people to have less hours which they might make less money anyways even if even with a higher wage and if they lose their job doesn't really do them any good that that way either so that's the big problem with it Pretty soon other areas are gonna be following suit with this because Washington DC in July, they're gonna be raising their minimum wage up to $17.50 an hour, but you still need to make $168,000 a year to be able to afford to buy a home, guys. So I'm pretty sure no one thinks that raising the minimum wage is gonna help people at the bottom eventually afford to buy their own home because that's just never gonna happen, especially at these prices. But maybe it will help these people at least be able to afford the rent, I think is the mentality with this. But to make things more interesting, they actually talked to some fast food workers who got this raise to see how they feel about it. And it's kind of interesting to hear their opinions when you hear this. The LA Times, they asked some of these people, what does the $20 an hour minimum wage mean for you? And one person, she's 19 years old, she works at El Pollo Loco. She said that the larger paychecks will be a major help as she struggles with high housing costs and inflation. She said she is literally bringing the money home where she lives with her family to pitch in towards more bills. So once again, she's, she's somebody that's just living with family here and they're all, you know, put money in the bucket to just to be able to survive guys and I think that's how a lot of these families survive in California because it's really the only way for most people but now that she got this raise she's kind of worried that the higher hourly wage could lead to decreased hours and that inflation could keep creeping up to where her pay bump flattens out and that's exactly how this is going to work out it's a very smart 19 year old girl here to actually realize this that 
this is exactly how it's going to play out, guys, because inflation is not going back to the 2% target. It looks like maybe never at this point. You know, we're not getting close to it. It's just kind of hovering in the mid threes right now, if you believe the government numbers. And for the things that really matter, like food, rent, gas, and groceries, the inflation numbers on those things are actually significantly higher than the three and a half percent range. And so somebody like this that just got an, a raise to making $20 an hour, it does help a little bit. But if inflation keeps going at this pace, which it seems like it will, it's not gonna do her much good in the long run, especially if her employer decides to cut her hours. You know, that would basically be putting them right back down to making the previous minimum wage if that were to happen. So essentially, this might have no impact on their monthly budget at all once this starts getting sorted out. Because it's only been a few days and already you're seeing massive ripple effects from this in California, guys. It's only been six days as of me shooting this. It's April 6th when I'm shooting this video. California has already lost at least 18 subways because of this. And the reason why those subways are going under is they can't afford to pay their employees $20 an hour and still turn a profit and stay in business. So they're like, let's just close up shop instead. That's literally the thing that makes the most sense right now is to close down. They talked to another young girl, 20 years old. She's the primary wage earner in her family, okay? That's gotta be tough. She's been working at Wendy's for about a year now, and she's trying to go to community college at the same time. So she said for her, the, the wage increase means that uh, less pressure to work 40 plus hours each week, giving her more time to focus on school or even get a mental break from work and school. Well, that is unless they cut her hours too, which is probably going to be the case for a lot of these people, unfortunately. So the relief that they think they're gonna get they may end up not seeing at all, which is the saddest part. But she also gets it too, because she says, you know what, I think this is also gonna lead to, because of the fact that we're all getting paid more, that prices are gonna continue going up. She didn't specifically mention inflation, but she understands that this is gonna be a problem, guys, because when people get paid more, the restaurants have to charge more, which increases inflation. It also puts more money in more people's hands, chasing the same goods and services, which further increases inflation. So people get the general idea that when you raise the wages like this, that it's going to increase inflation. They also talk to uh, family-run franchises over there in California, and they basically feel targeted right now with this minimum wage increase. You know, they have singled out uh, family-owned fast food franchise operators to target with wage and regulatory requirements not imposed on other businesses. And yeah, it is unfair. You know, why can't they just raise the minimum wage to $20 an hour statewide? Why are they targeting fast food in particular? That is very suspicious. They say that as family-owned businesses, we are proud to provide jobs and opportunities for our valued employees, but we also want an even playing field. The minimum wage for one should be the same for all. And that's what I just said. They talked to one guy, 74 years old, who owns 19 McDonald's restaurants across LA, all right? And he's been working at McDonald's since the 1960s when he was a kid in Chicago. And fast forward 57 years later, this guy owns and operates 19 different McDonald's. So it's not like this guy got handed all this stuff. He had to work hard to open up his McDonald's franchises over the years. And he said, you know what? We run these McDonald's like any other family business would. His daughter has taken a real interest and she's basically been her father's business partner since she was five years old because she just loved going to work with dad and working in the business. You know, I was kind of like that with my dad too. I used to love going to work with my dad over summer break and going to see what he does for a living and you know helping out when I could and stuff like that. I just thought it was cool. I was always the kind of kid that just wanted to make money also. So I was very fascinated with working from a very young age. It's kind of the opposite of most young people today. He also says that politicians do not understand the tight margins that these stores run on, you know? So they don't really have the capacity to pay these people more without increasing prices significantly, which is obviously gonna hurt their business. And for now, these guys that own the 19 McDonald's, they're saying we're not looking at laying anybody off just yet, but we're gonna have to evaluate each location uniquely to determine if these businesses are gonna be able to remain profitable after this. You know, it's only been a few days, so there's gonna to have to be at least several months pass by before 
people really start to get the gist of it, guys. But already having 18 subways closed is kind of crazy. You know, those subways already know that they're going to be in the red because of this. And they also talk to some of the customers to see how they feel about this, which is pretty interesting. They talked to a guy that goes to El Pollo Loco all the time, and he said that he goes to these fast food restaurants during the week because it's easier to eat a, a warm lunch that way. He says if prices go up, he might have to change his habits, which a lot of people I've seen in the comments have said, you know, this is good riddance. You know, this is going to force more people to eat less fast food, which very well could be the case and could be healthy. You know, a lot of people probably do eat too much of this. Like this guy, for example, eating out fast food throughout the week for lunch is extremely unhealthy, you know? I think it's unhealthy to eat it at all. This guy's eating it five days a week. But even this guy is smart enough to realize that, hey, you know, because of this wage increase, they may start laying some of these people off or cutting their hours or replacing them with machines because they're already seeing it happen. You know, McDonald's is already very famous for doing this. And I'm sure a lot of other fast food chains are gonna follow. This guy says, what seemed to be a good idea is actually going to hurt the people that the law is trying to help but maybe it will be a good example for other states that might be thinking about doing the same. <laughs> in other words, whatever you see us do in California, do the opposite. <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys, as much as I would love to move to California, it's stuff like this that just stops me from doing it, that along with the high taxes, because you just never know what's gonna happen next. And it seems like everything that is happening next is designed to strip away people's rights or increase the cost of living exponentially. So neither one of those things are good. So. I'm just gonna remain here in Florida until people get so sick of it over there and start turning it around. But I will come visit you in the summer because you have the, mo the most beautiful summers in the country. But you know, in a separate story out of California, I just saw this on other YouTube channels yesterday like German in Venice, that they're closing all 371 of the 99 cent stores over there in California. Like this, this is the year that dollar stores are getting absolutely crushed, guys. You saw already that the Dollar Tree and Dollar General are having problems too. You know, over a thousand dollar stores and one of those brands closing down. I forget which one is doing the closures, but they're closing a thousand stores. And now the 99 cent store, that's another 371 stores. And it's like, this is a double whammy hit for people that live in these areas because not only do they remove the option to buy cheap merchandise at the lowest price possible in their neighborhood, but also all these people working there are gonna lose their jobs. But yet this is a sign that the economy must be going great, right? Cause you know, things are going fantastic when you're seeing literally thousands and thousands of businesses close up shop and the year's not even halfway over yet. And we just talked yesterday about how Freddie Mac is predicting that we're gonna see mortgage rates stay higher for longer now here. But also the Cleveland Fed president, Loretta Mester, she just came out this week and said that she thinks that uh, interest rates are also gonna have to remain higher for longer now because of all these crazy reports. You know, we're seeing these crazy jobs numbers come out that just look so fake and so ridiculous. And you know, it's because they're all part-time jobs and a lot of them are government jobs, guys. So it's easy to create these part-time Mickey Mouse jobs that nobody wants to work at. And so that looks like it's artificially goosing the economy when it isn't. Here's exactly what Loretta said. She says, I raised my estimate to reflect the continued resilience in the economy despite high nominal interest rates and higher model-based estimates of the equilibrium interest rate. You know, all this Fed speak, how do these guys even learn how to talk like this is what I wanna know. Like, nobody talks like this in real life. Jerome Powell's pretty much backing that up. He goes, my instinct would be that rates will not go back down to the very low levels that we saw before. So basically get used to these higher rates, guys. I think they're promising and penciling in these rate cuts to try to make investors feel good about the economy, but that's all it is. You know, it's just all hype to get people excited about this and make it feel like it's gonna happen that hasn't materialized, you know? The, the market was betting on like seven or eight rate cuts this year, starting at the beginning of this year. So far we've seen zero. We may end up seeing zero for the rest of the year. Figured I'd do something a little different today in case you can't tell, you know, I started off in the neighborhood, walking around Sunset Harbor a little bit here today in South Beach, seeing the vibe down here. And uh, clearly it's a beautiful day in Miami Beach. 
But I think way too many sectors of the economy have been banking on these interest rate cuts coming this year, guys. And when it doesn't materialize, there's going to be so many different sectors in trouble. We already know commercial real estate is the biggest casualty from this, and they will continue to be over the next several years. But just regular businesses that can't access capital because they're not able to get the loans due to the banking trouble that's being caused from the commercial real estate, that's another problem. So probably you're gonna see more businesses continue to go under, just like we saw with the 99 cent store. That's completely unrelated to the California minimum wage increase, but because the economy is not as strong as we're being told, they're going out of business anyways because they can't hold it together. People are not coming in and buying this stuff like they used to. Whatever happens from here, I don't think the ending is going to be very happy. With all of these companies closing up shop, and even with the government's best efforts to thwart you know, the high cost of living, giving fast food workers $20 an hour, it's still not enough to really change the game for these people. And I think that's where we're really at with it. And it's always gonna be up to individuals from now on to just kind of make their own way. You're gonna have to figure out a way to make more, guys. There's no, there's no other alternative right now. You can't be relying on the government to give you a minimum wage increase. You can't be relying on your employer to give you a raise or anything like that. You're gonna have to have a side hustle. You're gonna have to find a way to make extra money on your own if you wanna have any shot at you know getting ahead in this life because relying on somebody else to do it for you, it's never gonna happen. But it's gonna be interesting to keep following up on this and see what the end result is. I think it's just gonna increase inflation even further and it's gonna put more people out of work and make things worse because that's what the government intervention does, unfortunately. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.